Hello friends, today we will discuss about PCR annealing temperature. I know it's very basic thing in molecular biology, but this video will be helpful for newbies to understand the what the annealing temperature in PCR. So stay tuned. So firstly here is the definition of annealing temperature. Annealing temperature refers to the temperature at which the primers bind to their complementary DNA sequences during the polymerase chain reaction. It is an important PCR parameter since it has a direct impact on the effectiveness and specificity of the amplification procedure. However, setting up an annealing temperature for a particular PCR reaction is highly depends on the primer length and its composition, like GC content. So firstly, we should understand what are the criteria for good pair of primers. Primers should not more than 18 to 22 bases. They should contain GC content between 50 to 55 percent. They should have low hairpin structure and low primer diaper tendency. They should be highly specific to target sequences. As I mentioned that the annealing temperature is specific to the primers used in the PCR reaction, annealing temperature typically determined based on the melting temperature of the primers. The TM is the temperature at which half of the DNA duplex is denatured and half is annealed. The TM is influenced by factors such as the length and composition of the primers. If we talk about annealing temperature, annealing temperature depends on the length of the primers, GC content and specificity. And of course, on the melting temperature. The annealing temperature is a temperature lower than the melting temperature which facilitates primer binding. So now you may wonder what exactly happens during annealing. As I said, it's an amplification step that allows primer template binding to the complementary location. That means if the annealing temperature is calculated accurately, it will only bind to its target location. During the process, Hydrogen bonds form between the nucleotides of the primer and the DNA strand. Once the binding is assured, tagged DNA polymerase starts synthesizing the strand by using the 3' and hydroxyl end of the primer. Ideally, the annealing temperature should be 5 degrees Celsius lower than the melting temperature. Although, check out the annealing temperature using the primer design software too. It is very important to know that the GC content of the primer also influences the annealing temperature. High, higher the GC content, the higher the annealing temperature. In order to understand this step more accurately, we have to understand what happens during higher and lower annealing temperatures. If we talk about too high annealing temperature, we will get fewer or no amplification. Or in most cases, a higher annealing temperature leads to no amplification. This is because when the temperature exceeds, primers can't bind with their template. And when we talk about too low annealing temperature, we may get non-specific amplification or primer dimer because lowering the annealing temperature in PCR can provide flexibility to primers which allow them to bind to different positions in, in the DNA sequence. Therefore, it leads to non-specific amplification. So next is how to calculate the annealing temperature. For calculating the exact annealing temperature, we need to first calculate the melting temperature of primers with the help of this following equation. I am giving you an example. If we have a primer having 22 bases which has 9 G plus C and 13 A T. So we put this figure in the equation and get the result which is 62 degrees Celsius. So the melting temperature of this primer should be nearly 62 degrees Celsius and so the annealing temperature of this primer might be approx 57 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Celsius. So we have to calculate the same for another primer and tentatively find the, find the average. If we summarize this, we have to put 3 to 4 temperature variations in the PCR to check the best one. So we can't rely on a single temperature, right? This is a manual method, but nowadays much more advanced and accurate online software is available that can find the best primer set as well as calculate the annealing temperature for our reaction. Besides, Setting the temperature for primer binding, the time duration for annealing is indeed important. The ideal time for the step is 30 to 60 seconds. 
so the change in time may influence results negatively for instance even though we have a good annealing point but perform the step for 2 minute it might produce non specific bands and primer dimer too now coming to the how we can optimize the annealing step for multiplex pcr it's quite tough because every template has a different temperature to anneal and that might not be covered in the pcr gradient so what can we do we can manipulate the reaction using reagents such as dmso or mgcl2 an appropriate amount of dmso in the pcr reaction can decrease or adjust the annealing temperature for let's say you have two reactions with 60 degree or 55 degree celsius and you have a simple pcr machine no temperature gradients adding a pinch of dmso in the 60 degree celsius reaction will adjust it and can amplify the template at 55 degree celsius likewise adding a pinch of mgcl2 increases the amplification capacity even at the higher annealing temperature however you need to first optimize how much amount is required i'll make a separate video on role of dmso and mgcl2 in pcr reaction to make more understand the process so the pcr annealing temperature isn't the only factor that influences final results many things such as primer design ingredient concentration reaction buffer reagents used template template quality and quantity have a definite role too so achieving a successful amplification isn't that much easy you have to you, ha you have to have a huge experience and expertise in this pcr reaction so this is the end of the video hope you like it thank you for listening for more conceptual videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and give thumbs up share if you like this video stay tuned take care